You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. You wanted it, you got it. A radio program that helps teach you options trading inside and out, basic to complex. This is Options Bootcamp. Whether you want to learn how to protect your portfolio, generate income, or even become a master of volatility, the Options Bootcamp drill instructors will break it all down for you. Now, let's get you into peak options trading shape. Here are your Options Bootcamp drill instructors, All right, everybody. That music means it is Education Wednesday yet again here on the network. Time for the premier educational program. Yep. We're talking options boot camp. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever exciting Options Insider Radio Network. Pleased to see so many of you enjoying getting a lot of value out of the Secret Club, also known as Options Insider Pro. <laughs> it just sounds so fun with the Secret Club. It's kind of, kind of cool. Make up a secret handshake, all the other good stuff. You want to learn what the heck we're talking about? Join it for yourselves. Get all the exclusive content, the pro q and I know the folks who listen to this show. I know the folks who listen to Bootcamp love their Qs and As. In fact, we're going to do some more of that today. So if you like exclusive ones with some of the leading names from throughout the world of options and derivatives, then uh, check out the options insider.com slash pro for our pro Q and A's options oddities, everything else we do out there, all the live stuff, all the live fun throughout the week, the fun community that's in there. We're going to probably add more features and flair to that going forward. Probably maybe a nice a standalone server. We have the Mixler now, and that's nice, but we may be adding some new features to it as well. So a lot more coming as we keep unfolding it and more people come in and they have their requests and all the other fun stuff that they like to see all the bells and whistles. At the end of the day, it's your secret clubs, what you folks like is what it will become. So we'd love to hear your feedback. And of course, if you're listening after the fact, we'd love all you folks to keep those questions and comments coming. We do love to hear from all of you guys and gals out there today. And my usual compatriot, my usual partner in crime, the black-headed one, Mr. Passarelli, doing a bit of a tour here at the end of the week on a bit of a hiatus here, so not going to be able to join us today. I tried to drag him kicking and screaming, but he is literally on the go right now so i think a bit of a well-deserved vacation <laughs> here so it's going to be a solo show today which means we just have more time for you folks to get at us you know the mailbag on the show just overfloweth here so let's get at it with a little bit of the old mail call mail call time to look at questions submitted by our listeners All right, everybody, welcome to the mail call, the portion of the show where you folks take the reins. Like we said, we could have gone on hiatus this week. It is summer. People are traveling. But no, dang it. You folks want, nay, you demand a new episode of Boot Camp every week. So I'm here to bring it to you because you folks get what you want here on the old network. Before we get into that, it was like some interesting breaking news in the world of options and derivatives right before we kicked off the show. You know, I've talked about this. I've teased them both for years. Uh, CME is on one side of town here, Chicago Mercantile Exchange. CBOE is on the other side of town. There was the Board of Trade right there as well. CME gobbled them up years ago. So it's kind of been CME slash CBOT together and then CBOE on the other side of town. I've often said there's one slice of that CME pie that is missing, and that is CBO. And I've talked to the heads of both exchange many times saying, hey, you guys going to do that dance? You're going to make it happen? And you, they've always demurred and always said, no, no, no. And I know 
Terry Duffy over there at CME has always said he doesn't really want to deal with the SEC. <laughs> like CFTC, they're a much easier regulator to work with. SEC has a lot of other bailiwicks. They don't really care too much about options, quite frankly. So it's it's always been an issue for him. But clearly they see the writing on the wall, the growth over the past year, the lion's share of it has been in the equity derivative space. So looks like they're making a play for SIBO today. News breaking literally minutes before we came onto the show here that a CME made a $16 billion offer in stock to buy SIBO. That values them at about $150 a share, about 20 cents up, 20, excuse me, 20% above where it was trading. And we're seeing a nice little pop in SIBO here, up about six bucks or about 5% here to 130. It was trading 134 this one. Actually, it got up as high as like it's about 133. So yeah, not maybe not quite as much of a pop as you might have initially thought, but still a nice pop here in SIBO land. Clearly, they want a piece of that VIX and SPX action. If you've been listening to our TWIFO show, you know that uh, CME is becoming more and more active in the vol space, creating their own CVOL indices not too long ago, which are effectively their version of VIX, very similar methodology, but applied to their different products like ags and metals and things. So it was clear they saw vol and indeed equity options as a future growth space. And now they're they're doing it. They're doing what people have talked about for the better part of the last decade, trying to complete the trifecta. There was an exchange called One Chicago back in the day. This would be the One Chicago Exchange. This would be CBOE, CBOT, and CME all together under one umbrella. Interesting to see. You know, the the CME, CBOT deal really kind of flew under the radar in terms of antitrust. They really didn't focus. It kind of sailed through. I was kind of surprised given how much derivatives flow was aggregated in one entity. And now with CBOE and given the current administration out there, I have a feeling they'll probably take a closer look at this one, but still, it's an intriguing one out there. So if you trade options on any side of the fence now, you trade equity options, you trade volatility products, you trade index options, you trade futures options, chances are your flow is going to come through the future one Chicago exchange here. So interesting stuff afoot here. I just wanted to call that to your attention. A lot of people who listen to this show kind of only tangentially pay attention to the world of options, but that's a big story and that will probably impact a lot of you. Going for so speaking of you folks out there, you guys have been asking us a lot to bring back the polls, bring back the questions of the week. So we have done so. So if you're listening, whenever you're listening to this show, head on over to at options on Twitter. Probably going to have a poll there live for you. Even if you listen months from now, there'll be something live for you there to participate in. Last week's question was a hot and heavy one. We asked you folks where you thought VIX was going to close at the end of the week. The answer was sub 16 is in the 15 handle. And yet your answers on the poll we broke down on the show last week were very evenly split. And they went into the end of the week also very evenly split, which pretty much one of the most evenly split polls we've ever done, which goes to show kind of what's afoot out there in the volatility market right now, which is a lot of varying opinions out there. The winning answer in our poll, which was not the winning answer in life, unfortunately, was the 16 to 17 half range that got about 29% of the vote, followed by 24% roughly for below 16, which was the right answer, and then a tie for number three with 23.5% pretty much for 17.5 to 19 and above 19. So quite a disparate range of volatility prognostications. And you know what? Over the course of the last couple of sessions, we saw pretty much all of those ranges play out. So I guess they all were technically right if we extended it into Monday and indeed into Tuesday. Interesting couple of sessions from a vol perspective out there. This week's question. Still pertaining to vol, you guys can play right now if you're listening live. If you're listening after the fact, it will be live through the end of this week. If you're listening beyond that, I know a lot of you do, you'll have another poll to play with. But at options right now, you can go find it. Everyone has volatility on the brain these days, but which product holds the volatility crown? Quite simply, which of these products has the highest 30-day ATM, a.k.a. at the money, volatility? And no cheating. Don't pull it up on your brokerage platform. Just use your gut. What does your gut tell you? Gave you four different choices from four different product areas. Bitcoin, VIX, so volatility itself. I know that's a little meta to think the vol of vol, but it does exist. It's called VVIX. Just throwing out spoilers out there. Uh, crude, crude oil. That's also been a pretty volatile asset of late. Or Tesla, a day that ends in Y. Tesla is moving. So is Bitcoin. You can argue Tesla and Bitcoin may be somewhat similar these days. But there you go. Four of them out there right now. I'll give you a little bit of a glimpse into how the voting is breaking down right now. So far, nearly two-thirds, over 60% 
of you are saying Bitcoin, which I understand. Bitcoin has quite the reputation for volatility out there. Number two is VIX with about 24.5% bringing up the rare. Number three with about 7% each are crude oil and Tesla. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Get on over there to at options. Make your voice heard. We will reveal the results and indeed the actual winner in terms of what the actual answer is on the show next week. I can't obviously give it to you now. That would be no fun. All right, let's go on out to our questions now. You'll know all of you out there in the secret handshake club. You guys get pride of place here on the show. So your questions get bumped to the top of the list, not just for boot camp, but for every show we do here on the network. And we got Dan T here coming at us from the secret handshake club. He says, I do have a question about in the money puts. I can't get a good feel for them. An example I have is I had 400 shares of UPST. And if you're not familiar with this one, and again, this is not a name that's on my watch list on a regular basis either, listeners. This is Upstart Holdings, Inc. This is an AI lending platform. Uh, interesting. And they've had an interesting run of late. I think we're going to get to that in the question. He says, an example I had is I had 400 shares of UPST at around the 140 trade price. So $140, right before earnings. I bought four deep in the money puts at around the strike of 195 Wow, $55 in the money puts. You're right. Those are indeed deep in the money puts. Uh, they ended up having fantastic earnings, and the stock shot up to as high as 185 uh, My in the money puts were down about 15000 although my shares were up about 18000 or so, but it ended up being a wash. My thought process is if I'm buying a 195 in the strike in the money put, I should have plenty of room to bet on the stock not getting up to 195, which it didn't, but I'm now kicking myself for losing out on all that profit I should have rightfully gotten without being offset. Yeah, I can commiserate with you there, Dan. That's a shame. You had, looks like you had the, the winning lottery ticket in your hand and you, you may have hedged it out because this stock was trading at 135, almost 136 on Tuesday, August 10th. And the next session was trading 171. The day after that was trading 203. It's currently trading 216. So yeah, if you had it at 140, 400 shares, you were sitting on a substantial profit. And I'm very sad to hear that you did indeed hedge that out. But we'll get into some of the mechanics of why you thought that was the right thing and maybe some things you can do going forward. But don't beat yourself up too hard. This goes back to the psychological episode we just did. You know, that's one of the most dangerous things. You, you start looking at the FOMO and missing out. That can be a toxic thing. So I caution you, if possible. I know it's going to be hard, but if possible. Try not to go down that well too much because that way lies madness. He said, I'm kicking myself now for losing out all that profit. I should have rightfully gotten without being offset. So my question here is, are in the money puts worth buying? And how do they work in contrast to at the money, out of the money puts? I use portfolio margin. So buying the puts significantly adds buying power to my account because I am at least guaranteeing that I won't lose capital on the trade. Any feedback is welcome. All right. There's a lot to unpack here, Dan. And anyone else who's thinking about doing something like that, I think the first question you have to ask yourself is, why are you doing this? You have a stock that you ostensibly want to go up. That is pretty much the sole reason you own a stock. A stock, if you think about it, listeners, doesn't have all the other Greeks that we're talking about here with options. It's just a delta play. You want direction. So when you're long a stock, you want it to go up. So ostensibly, if you're holding 400 shares of something, you want it to move upward. That is the end goal. If you don't want that or you are concerned about that in the very near term, maybe you could consider unloading said stock or doing some other things. In this case, you bought a $55 in the money put. You don't see how far out you went. I'm assuming it was a pretty near dated put here. So what you've effectively done now, Dan, is you've created a couple of things. <laughs> First off, you've effectively got you know your stock, which is 100 Delta. 400 shares. And then you have your four puts, aka 400 shares of effectively what is a 100 delta puts, a 99 delta put. So effectively, you've created what we used to have on the trading floor, which was a delta neutral position. So you have no deltas anymore. So the directional component of that trade, which is the whole reason to own stock really, is gone. Now we used to do that on the trading floor for a couple of reasons. We were getting positions thrown at us all day that we never really wanted or intended. <laughs> so we were trying to just hedge away the immediate directional risk 
and then try to focus on either getting out of it through the spreads. Remember, as a market maker back then, the spreads were wider. You could make a living doing that and spread it away if you had two-sided paper or also make money on the Vega and the Gamma. Remember, you've hedged away the Delta component of this, but you have the option side, so you still are long Gamma. Not a ton because your puts are far, far in the money at this point. Remember, Theta and Gamma are highest in the the at-the-money strike, and they fall away as you go farther away from it, and you're pretty far away from it. So you don't have a ton of gamma as reflected in your profits, but you do have some, and you also have long vega. So what do you want? You want a nice, healthy move post-earnings, and you got that, which is nice. That helps the gamma component. And you also want vol to explode post-earnings, because you're pretty much just long vol and long gamma now. Looks like, I'm guessing, I haven't looked here, usually what happens in earnings is the vol doesn't explode. It comes crashing in, right? In this case, this move was so dramatic, I have to imagine the vol at least held firmer than it would have under normal circumstances. That probably helped you as well, which is why you ended up making about $3,000. You didn't lose money on this, which is nice. And that the reason you made money for that is, of course, you are long gamma. So your position is getting longer deltas as you go up, aka those puts that were essentially 100 delta when they were deep in the money. As you got closer and then pretty much to that strike and it became almost at the money, They've dropped too close to a 50 delta now. So the short leg of your trade, the short deltas have gotten less. So you've gotten longer deltas as you've gone up. Hence the about $3,000 that you made. You got longer as it went up, which is a good thing. That's the nice thing about being long gamma. You want to be long gamma when something moves like this. Now think about it also. When you buy puts and you buy stock, what have you done synthetically effectively? You effectively bought a call position. You can ask yourself, why again, back to the initial question. Why are you doing this? If you're concerned, sounds like your reasoning here was you want to free up more capital to trade other things. Well, if that's the case, you could accomplish the same thing a number of different ways. You could, since you effectively have just bought and call with this position synthetically, you could just go buy out of the money calls. Not always the most effective way to trade earnings, but if you get a move like this, they're going to make some money. That will free up a lot of capital. You could also, because you've gotten rid of a lot of your deltas, You could do the same thing with the stock. You could pare down some of your holdings, get rid of half of it, let's say. Now you've freed up a lot of capital and you have fewer deltas on the table. Sell two-thirds of it you want, just have 100 deltas. I mean, it's clear why the broker is freeing up capital for you. You've effectively just transferred your long stock, which has all that downside, to effectively just an out-of-the-money call position, which has very limited downside. So that's why you're, you're freeing up capital. And there are better ways you can do that that still have more profit potential for this to the upside. So yeah, I'm I'm sorry this happened to you, Dan. I'm sorry that this happened to be the one time you decided to hedge this where it looks like the earnings really just blew the doors off. But again, these are also times when we learn about this kind of, and you still made money on it. So that, that's a good thing. Keep that in your mind when you're kicking yourself on this one. You still made money. No one ever went broke. I said it before. Dan said it a million times in his books. No one ever went broke making a profit. Now, You may be not as happy as you were if you had all the other profit, but still, again, this is a learning experience for this. If you're going to do this, (laughs) remember what you're doing synthetically and effectively, and you can just go, just do that in that case and just buy calls. Don't deal with tying up capital in the stock and then tying up more capital in the downside puts and then trying to offset them and freeing up capital that way. You can just buy the calls. That's really what you want to do. You can also peer down the stock position as well, have fewer deltas on the table, free up more capital. I mean, if you're trading this, you want this thing to work, right? And it was. So the question then is, why do you want to neuter this to go trade something else? Especially going into earnings, it has a chance to do something, right? So yes, this is unfortunate. But again, this is learning. And hopefully this will also help other people out there who maybe are thinking about putting on some deep in the money puts against their underlying. It's a difficult way to go and not always and not usually really the most effective way to do exactly what Dan was trying trying to free up capital. There are better ways uh, to do it. But again, interesting, informative. We love all of our secret handshake folks out there here. looks like we got uh, Nichols in the live chat saying, yo, well, yo, back to you there, Mr. Nicholas. (laughs) Uh, We love you all up there. Everyone's having a fun time there in the Secret Handshake Club. Next up, we've got Chinook. Chinook says, I can't remember if you did an episode of Options Bootcamp covering how, quote, expected move informs your trading decisions. If you haven't, I would love to hear what you and Dan have to say about it. Well, you have to wait to hear what Dan has to say about it. But in general, 
when he's talking about expected move listeners, he's effectively talking about the at the money straddle. And we've said this many times before here on the network as well. People talk about a lot of different indicators around earnings, time, what the analyst expectations are, what the whisper number is. And quite frankly, that's a whole bunch of nonsense. Who cares what some person at Morgan or Jeffries or whatever has to say or thinks about a certain stock? That doesn't matter. They have no skin in the game. What matters is what people with real money are willing to wager is going to happen in particular stock post earnings. That's by any study, by orders of magnitude, is far and away the more accurate and useful analysis out there. So that's what you should be paying attention around earnings time. What is the market expecting in terms of movement for this? And it's, it's a pretty simple process. Let's say XYZ, for example, is trading around $100 again. Let's say earnings are two weeks to go. And the two-week out option, that straddle, is trading for about five bucks. So at the money call is $2.5. At the money put is $2.5. Put them together, that's five bucks. That means they're expecting roughly a $5 move or a 5% move around that at the money price through that options expiration. And that's real money. That's real analysis, real hard dollars. Trust me, if that was crazy out of whack in one way or the other, there would be size money coming in to take advantage of it. So it's something you could look at as a fairly, it doesn't mean it's going to move $5, but it's a the best estimate out there for what the range is going to be somewhere within that. Now, I will also say, in the pandemic era, the straddles have become a little bit of a different beast. Usually, and we've d- broken this down many times on shows like The Advisor's Option and others, I encourage you to check out, if you're interested in this, Chinook and everybody else, we do those earnings move, earnings move results, and earnings season reports are all available for free over there, theoptionsinsider.com. And click on the Options News and Articles tab. That'll get you to all that goodness uh, that comes from Matt and his team over there at Orats, and it's been fascinating to watch because they crunch the numbers for most of the main tickers you're going to pay attention to and looking at how they performed in the past versus what they're pricing in right now. And what's pretty much happened since the pandemic began is that names have been crushing vol compared to their previous trails. So let's say in past cycles, they've moved $15, let's say, in a particular name. They're coming into this cycle, they're going to price in, let's say, $10. So they're already cutting a third off that straddle. And then in the initial move after the earnings, they maybe they'll move $8 or $7.5. And so what we've seen is pretty much that cycle play out month after month, week after week, earnings season after earnings season for pretty much a year and a half now, ever since the pandemic began. It was strange to me. It surprised me. I know it surprised Matt as well, because I expected kind of the opposite. I expected vol to be through the roof. These names were coming back in. They had, Due to the pandemic, they couldn't really give any guidance for the rest of the year. So it was kind of like a an unprecedented situation where companies are coming in saying, yeah, we have no guidance. We withdraw everything and stock would A, rally and B, vol would come in. And it was, it was just a fascinating thing to watch. And it's happened so many times now that I started trying to predict towards the end of last year, okay, maybe this is the season where earnings vol will start to outperform. Because Think about it, listeners. They can only squeeze so much blood from a stone, right? Eventually, stone's got to be dry. It has to start outperforming. And I thought it was maybe in the beginning of this year. It wasn't. Matt got really excited last season. He thought this was the season where they've squeezed enough blood, enough juice out of all of these straddles that a few of them have to start outperforming. And he came back a couple weeks later and said, nope, this isn't it. They're still crushing it. Most of the seasons we've seen since the start of the pandemic have averaged somewhere around 60 to 70 odd percent. So if you bought a basket of all the earnings straddles that are out there. Uh, you've gotten back 60-odd to 70-odd cents on the dollar. So it's been a losing trade. That doesn't mean you can't go out and just short everything because there are a few every cycle that blow the doors off. And if you happen to be short those, as we just saw with our last question, that could be end up being costly. Uh, so it has been a fascinating thing to watch. That said, that said, just this week, I was chatting with Matt early on our Options Bootcamp outside of it, and he was getting pretty excited because – just the last two weeks of the earnings cycle are the first weeks we've seen in the green, which is they've actually outperformed their at-the-money straddles in aggregate. So I think last week was around 104%. They don't have the reports in front of me. And this week's around like 103%. doesn't sound like a lot. That means you pretty much, if you bought that basket, you got back like a dollar and three. <laughs> but it's a heck of a lot more than we were getting for pretty much the last year and a half. So perhaps, perhaps that worm is starting to turn now out there. So just a little bit of color for how you should be viewing 
the quote unquote expected move or earnings shadow right now, and that they've been annihilating these things. Maybe the worm is starting to turn. How can you use these straddle? That's another good question there as well. A lot of different ways. First off, it gives them an expected idea of what the volatility is, right? That's the other side of the straddle. People used to, when I was on the in the SPX or other, they would call up and say, hey, we want a straddle run of all the different months, right? So they, they get a quote for all the different months that gives them, A, the term structure, how the vol is looking across all the months. And also, the at the money straddle is effectively the volatility for that month, right? So they get a sense for, okay, here's how the vol is shaping up. So that's your first thing. It tells you, okay, here's the volatility in this name. You can say to yourself, how does this compare to historical? Is it cheap or is it expensive? As I just broke down, it's probably going to be cheaper than historical. And so you could weigh to yourself, is that something I should be trading or is it still going to keep coming in? Uh, the answer has been the latter for pretty much the past year and a half, except for the last couple of weeks. So again, interesting times we all li- are living in now. And there's a lot of ways you can use that too. For example, if you listen to the sister program to this, which is Options Playbook Radio, which also comes out on Education Wednesday. Uh, You'll know that Brian, for example, does a lot of skip strike flies and things like that. And what he typically does with those is he'll look at the name he's trading and he'll look at the at the money straddle, which is the expected move. He usually does them around earnings. So it's usually the expected earnings move. And then he'll say, okay, I'm going to, here's the straddle. Again, let's go back to XYZ. It's pricing in five bucks. Let's go, it's pricing in a $5 move. So he'll come in probably if he's doing Let's say a call fly, he'll come in and start at the 105 strike. So right at the outside of that expected move, he usually plans his trade and starts his trade at the outside edge of that that expected move. That's one of the primary use cases for, well, that's really two of the primary use cases. They give you the pretty much the vol, what's going on from a vol perspective in the name, which is incredibly useful information for your trading. And then also it gives you a nice range of what you can expect around a certain time frame. So if it's earnings or if it's just by the end of this week or the end of this month, it helps you to set up. If you are, let's say, an iron condor trader or an iron fly, something like that, and you kind of want to know where to maybe place your strikes, the straddle is a great guide for that. And so you could use it. It doesn't mean you have to trade straddles because that's a difficult thing, as we've discussed many times on this show. To make money in long straddles, very difficult. Use it to inform your other trades. And that, that's a great, really, starting point. Those are the two ways I really use straddles is, A, of course, for what they're telling me for the market's expectations for what's going on in this name, and then, B, how I could then trade around that if said move does come to pass. So, yeah, it's a very useful tool. Even if you don't trade straddles, you should pay attention to them. You should pay attention to those earnings move and earnings move results reports because, A, they're free. B, they only exist because I twisted Matt's arms into doing them. And C, they're really not available anywhere else. This is really important data that people have asked us about for years and wasn't available. There was like one Goldman study from like 10 years ago about how earning straddles performed over time. And that was really about it. And so I got tired of referring people to a 10-year-old proprietary study. I thought we should have some more moving, moving data on this. And so I strong arm Matt. And the result is you guys get free earnings data throughout the entire season, every season. It's a pretty cool thing. So if, even if you don't trade a lot of earnings, you want to see what's going on, you want to see the trends, we break it all down. The earnings move, the earnings move results. So that's earnings move is what's expected. Earnings move results is so how they actually com- performed compared to what's expected. And the earnings season, we break it all down as well by week. So you could see exactly how each season worked out compared to expectations and also how the entire season is shaping up. So it's extremely informative stuff. And to my knowledge, it does not exist anywhere else. And again, you can't beat the price. It's free. So there you go, Chinook. Traddle's very useful and very helpful. And everyone should be paying attention to them, even if you're out, not out there trading earnings or you're not out there trading straddles. Chances are you're trading some single name, in which case this stuff is going to play. And even if you're just an index person out there, how these big names perform with their earnings is going to impact how, how the S&P moves, particularly if you're talking some of the big dogs like the apples, right? Where they go, the S&P follows. So it is still important uh, for everyone else out there. Next up, we've got Greg, Greg Moser. Let's see how many we can squeeze. Man, you guys really you guys really hit the mailbag hard on boot camp. We love it. We love it. I try to get to We could have just pretty much an additional Q&A show every week to some of your questions. So we love them. Keep them coming. You know where to find us, at Options on most of the major social media platforms. Uh, Members can get at us through the live chat, through the special secret handshake club hotline, or indeed the old-fashioned way, questions at theoptionsinsider.com. 
also works. This comes from Greg. Greg Moser says, I have recently found your podcast and I have enjoyed what I have heard. Well, glad to hear it, Greg. You are not alone. A lot of newcomers to the network these days. He says, as a consummate learner, ooh, I like that. I would like to understand if there is an actual quote options playbook. And if so, how could I sign up to receive or purchase a copy? Any guidance is appreciated. You know, this is like the fifth question we've received on this <laughs> in the last month or two. The continuing confusion over the existence of the options playbook baffles me. I would have Brian address this on his show. I probably will because that's his playbook. He wrote it. But he again, he's on vacation right now, so I'll do it for him. <laughs> but yes, the options playbook, first off, it does exist. If you just want to read the content of the titular options playbook, then you can go to optionsplaybook.com. It is all available there completely for free. So you don't need to buy anything. You can go there and you can read through all of the different strategies that are brought to bear in there. And I've said it before. If you're listening to this show and you're not checking out Options Playbook or reading optionsplaybook.com, it's one of the best starter guides out there for options. It will take you from A to Z. When we have new staff start here and stuff, I'll often hand them a copy of the playbook. Say, here, check this out. It's very user-friendly. It's very easily intuitive, even for people who are maybe new to the world of options. So you can go to Amazon, just type in Options Playbook. You'll see it right there. The Kindle version is 10 bucks, and it looks like there's a hardcover for around 25 So however you like to get it, Unfortunately, there's no uh, no audible version. <laughs> Maybe Brian will try to rope me, strong arm me into voicing the audible version. But you know what? You don't need an audio book because what you also have is the companion podcast, which is, of course, Options Playbook Radio, which airs every week on this network, usually immediately after this show. So if you want an audio version after you check out optionsplaybook.com, of course, there's actually, I forgot, there's another way. The only really ways to get the playbook are to buy it on Amazon. If you want an actual physical copy, or if you're in our secret handshake club, we also offer that as a freebie to the winners of our cool Options Insider Pro trading crate. That is one of the choices you can choose for the educational component of your crate. So that's one of the other few places you can get it without shelling out your hard-earned cash for it. But again, if you're intrigued by that, Greg, and everyone else who's asking about it, sounds like you are. There is an actual options playbook. You can read the virtual version, optionsplaybook.com. You can buy it on Amazon to search your options playbook. You can listen to options playbook radio for the audio version effectively. And if you actually want to win a hard copy of the playbook, then join the secret handshake club out there. And you too can get a copy of that. All right, let's see. We're kind of coming up against it. We've already been going on for a little bit. But so many people are just, shall we say, you have a lot of questions, which is great. We love it. So we'll, we'll try to squeeze in one more here. This one is a newcomer. Pfeiffer Stadium. Interesting. I like that handle. This is, hey, bud. <laughs> well, hello to you. Hope you and your family are all well. Well, thank you. They are well. <laughs> it says, for the last three years, I got crushed learning options on my own. Uh, making any gains at this point will be amazing. I will not give up. Well, that's great to hear. Uh, that goes back to our psychological episode. You don't want to be so beaten down by options and your trading that you never come back to. That's been a cycle that unfortunately has been repeated too many times in the past. We are trying to break free from that cycle in this new era, hence the existence of this show. But I digress. He goes on. He says, do you recommend any sites or something that can help me make better trading? Any suggestions and all thoughts are very much appreciated. Hope you are doing great. Well, he certainly is very polite. All of you are very polite. out there. We love our audience here. Uh, yes, there are many places you can go. And you've made the first right steps. You've come to our network. So congratulations to you for that Pfeiffer Stadium. And you're doing the right first steps. If you lost money and you want to start learning, you probably don't want to shell out a lot at the beginning. Great starting points are, of course, this program, Options Boot Camp. It's available in its entirety on most of the platforms. If you go to iTunes, they are going to limit you to like the most recent 50 or so episodes. So if you go to our website, you download our mobile app, uh, that will get you access to pretty much all of the episodes there. So you can stream them all at your leisure, cost you absolutely nothing. And then, of course, if you have questions like you do now, you can always hit us up and we'll be happy to try to squeeze you into the very crowded mailbag. So that's a great starting point. I also recommend the kind of sister show, which is Options Playbook Radio. The two of those, you can also visit optionsplaybook.com to see some of the stuff in print. You go through both of those shows, you should be well situated. 
to really uh, start understanding these products a little bit better. Probably migrate yourself away from some of the trades that probably got you burned. I'm going to guess maybe crazy out of the money call flyers and things like that. Excuse me. So that's possible, but that will certainly help point you in the right direction. There are also other great, reliable free sources of information out there. Uh, Optionseducation.org. That is the Options Industry Council. They've been uh, partners of ours for a long time. We haven't put out a, just talked to them yesterday about putting out some new shows. We do have a wide world of options show you guys should check out as well, but it hasn't had a new episode in a couple of years because the folks at OIC are doing a lot of restructuring over there for the past couple of years. But OIC is a subsidiary, it's the educational subsidiary of the Options Clearing Corporation, which of course clears all of your options trades. What it means is that effectively it's a joint venture of all the exchanges. They all chip in money to educate you. So there's no agenda. There's no broker trying to sell you or a guru trying to sell you anything. It's just straight up education. If you go to optionseducation.org and check it out, it's all completely free. And they have great stuff as well. They have some podcasts there as well, including the ones they've done with us over the years. And a lot of other great educational information that is all completely free. And you can kind of access it at your leisure. And then once you go through all that, you should hopefully be a little bit better armed for trading. And then maybe you want to step it up to the next level, of course, Dan and his team over there at MTM are certainly happy to help you and walk you through some of their, you know, one-on-one or they have group coaching as well if you want a little bit less of a, you know, of a cost associated with it. But there are ways you can go to take it to the next level. But I encourage you, of course, and Dan can spell those out when he's here on the show. And you can go to markettaker2ts.com to learn more, of course. But I think you're taking the right approach. Dial it back. Check out some of these sources that you could learn from on your own time that don't take anything out of your wallet. And then from there, you can decide how you want to progress and what's right for you, what style of trading you even, you don't mention any of that here. You're a premium seller, a premium buyer, something else out there entirely. But there, you're taking the right first steps. You're listening to this stuff. You're reaching out. So that's that's a good thing, Fiverr Stadium. And I, keep us updated. I want to hear how you do. Hopefully, this turns around. And maybe give us a little bit more details on what exactly went wrong. And maybe then we could help fix it and turn it into something that went right. We'll wrap it up here with a quick one here from EMZ. EMZ wants to know, how much hashtag Shiba did you buy? (laughs) He's referring, of course, to Shiba Inu coin. And uh, the answer is none, EMZ. I did not buy any of that. I think that's a better question for Uncle Mike on option the option block because uh, he's the one who hates all crypto. And I always tease him about buying Shiba Inu. But I did not buy any Shiba Inu coin. All right, everybody. That music means we've come to the end of another episode here. Again, Dan traveling on vacation. Check him out at markettaker.com for all of his good stuff. Look for his books in Amazon as well. Dan Passarelli is the name. Two S's over there to check out for yourself. And, of course, he's on vacation. But I didn't want you folks to have to wait for another week out there. You guys love your boot camp. I'll make sure you have it hot and, hot and ready in your ear holes on demand so it'll be out there for you on the usual time i'll be back with the black hatted one again next week but of course we got more education coming at you this week opr later on today of course twifo and episode two of the option block tomorrow friday volatility views and of course for you pro members out there we got options oddities after that and then back again next education wednesday another episode of options Bootcamp. see you then You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com.